always nice when you can call on a familiar face when you need some help. Uh, when you need a little bit of assistance, you can hit up the right person and they can be like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 I got you. And this is what the Ravens are doing with signing Kevin Seymour, uh, which they are doing to the active roster. Now, Kevin Seymour, he's been on the Ravens practice squad since uh, around September 15th of this year. So he's been there early on in the season. Um, and with him being there, that has allowed him to gain some familiarity with the Ravens system, with their defense, which is always a good thing because we know how crazy and how, how complex this defense can be. Um, he's somebody that had a couple of call ups uh, this year. I know one for sure in the uh, I want to say the Chiefs. No, not the Chiefs game. Was it the Chiefs game? No, oh, I, I forget. Because it was, it, it was so long ago. It feels like this season has been, it's gone so fast. And it seems like those early games, it seems like they were like years ago almost uh, from how much has gone on, especially in this Ravens season, because this thing has been crazy. But anyway, he is on the official 53 now. Uh, he takes uh, Darius Washington's place. So they're going to be announcing him probably to IR uh, probably today, maybe like around 4 because uh, Ravens with roster moves, they usually announce them super, like, not even necessarily late, but they usually announce them, like, at deadline time. Uh, they might not even announce this till tomorrow because the game is tomorrow night. So, um, I'm not sure how. A anyway, you get the point. They'll, they'll announce it soon enough. Um, so, they just flip spots. Our Darius goes out. Kevin Seymour goes in. Now, um, he's somebody. He spent some time with Buffalo. He spent some time with the Panthers. Uh, he also spent some time in Philly. Hasn't really started many games because uh, when you look at everything in Buffalo, 2016, he started three games for them. Uh, in 2017, he started two games for the, uh, for the Panthers. And after that, he, uh, he hadn't started at all anymore. Okay, he got called up three times this year. Uh, one of them was a COVID call up, though, so that didn't count towards his call ups. Now, the, the Ravens, they must have definitely um, had some value uh, with him or saw some value with Kevin Seymour. Uh, reason being because he has been one of the guys that they have protected on the uh, practice squad. And whenever you protect somebody, like every week you can protect four players on the practice squad. So what that means, unlike Trace McSorley, who obviously wasn't protected, um, if you protect those, any one of those four guys, they cannot be signed off your practice squad. They can't. So, again, Trace McSorley, he was not protected, but with Kevin Seymour being protected, Ravens knew, like, hey, this guy, yeah, we know how our cornerbacks get. We know how our secondary gets. So, we know that we take hits there every single year, and it's like, no, no matter how deep our secondary is every single year, we're singing the same song every single year. And this year is no different. So, now with him being on the active roster... Um, you, depending on Jimmy Smith's status, I don't know what that's going to be. Depending on Anthony Avery's status, I don't know what that's going to be. Depending on Tavon Young's status, I don't know what that's going to be. I would expect to see him play tomorrow. Because I know we, um, a lot of people question if, um, Tolliver, who we also just signed, if, if he was going to be playing in the game tomorrow night against the Browns. But, no, I, uh, I, I wouldn't expect that. You never know, but. I wouldn't expect, and it, it, all, it actually would all just depend on who's available and who's not. Because Marlon Humphrey, he'll be good to go. Chris Westry, he'll be good to go. But it's just everybody else who we don't know about. I think Tavon Young, he should be good to go, but it's not 100 yet. So come tomorrow around about uh, 6.35, I think. Some, I don't know, an hour and a half before the game. That's when we'll get those official actives, inactives. So that should be neat. Um, between today and tomorrow, uh, just to give you all a quick little update, we have a loaded, 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 loaded episode of NFL questions from subscribers. It is loaded. Um, thinking about, yeah, like I said, either dropping that to either later tonight uh, or tomorrow morning, early tomorrow morning. Um, so y'all let me know whichever one you prefer. We'll, we'll get it figured out. Um, but either way, it will be dropping within the next 12 hours. Uh, so you can stay on the lookout for that. 
make sure you turn your notifications on because I do not want you to miss not one single video. Because I know the videos could be a lot. It could be a lot of videos. I know the videos, they could, they could go on and we have a lot of fun with the videos. Y'all know we could talk about Ravens literally forever. I mean, we talk about Ravens literally 365 days a week. I mean, 365 days out of the year. I mean, we, I think we might talk about them 365 days a week too. But we talk about Ravens a lot. Sometimes two times a day, sometimes three times a day. We talk about these Ravens literally every single day of the year. So I know it's a lot of videos. It's a lot of content con to consume, but I appreciate y'all for watching it. Shout out to the patrons. Shout out to just everybody. Um, y'all just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the game tomorrow night, we saw uh, Kareem Hunt. He got activated. Um, so that's, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, and Brown's offensive lineman, uh, is it Conklin? He got activated too. So Brown's, Brown's are getting healthier. They're getting healthier. Uh, tomorrow night, it's, it's going to be a showdown, man. It is going to be a showdown. Uh, I just, I feel like however, whichever way the game goes, I feel like it's, it's going to be a two point game. I just, I don't see either team blowing the other team out. I just, I can't see that. And, like, we, of course, we, we know Ravens football. And, I mean, this year we just don't know Ravens football, as a matter of fact. We don't know what this team is. We don't know what to expect from them week after week after week. We just don't know. And literally every time, every time when you think, oh, I got this figured out. All right, these are the Ravens that's getting ready to show up. Nope. Mm -mm. Completely different team shows up. Completely different team. And it's like, oh, well, Okay. Even though in the Bears game, I didn't think that was going to be a blowout. I didn't. I did not think that was going to be a blowout because um, just because of what we saw in the Dolphins game, really what we've been seeing all year. Ravens, uh, the only blowouts that they had were the, the Chargers game and the Broncos game. And that was it. Like the Broncos game wasn't even like a blowout blow, but it, it, it was decided well, well into the fourth. We knew Ravens were going to take care of business. Uh, in the same way with the Chargers game, just the flow of the game, Ravens have been taking care of business throughout, even with the two interceptions, even with those, um, they have still been taking care of business. Uh, but this team, again, Raiders overtime, Chiefs down to the wire, Lions down to the wire, Colts <laughs> down to the wire, Chargers, okay, blowout, Broncos, okay, blowout. Dolphins, ooh, yikes. <laughs> Bengals, ooh, yikes. Vikings, down to the wire. Overtime, as a matter of fact. Overtime, the, the Raiders, the Colts, the Vikings, and then the Bears, down to the wire. So, you get my point. These Ravens, this is, a, this is the normal Ravens. This is, this is the normal Ravens. This is what we have been used to for so long, especially under Joe Flacco and them. The, these are the Ravens that we know, the, the stress Ravens, the Ravens that's like, man, what are you doing for three quarters? Then all of a sudden, the fourth quarter, they decide to wake up. But that's why we get so frustrated with just a lot of decisions that are made, sometimes with execution, when they're not executing the right way, with, with some of the decisions that coaching would do. And that's why we get so frustrated, because we know these guys are better than the, what they put out there. We know they are. Um, the offensive line has been a, a big issue this year for sure, um, but it's it's an issue that you you have some options, some different things that you could try before you're at the point where it's like, all right, it ain't no hope for it. You got you got some different options that you could try, especially since Patrick McCarry is back. You can move him around. You can move Bradley Bozeman around. Put in Tristan Colon Castillo. You 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 got some options that you could do. Move Tyree Phillips. You, you got some options at linebacker. That issue has been fixed. Patrick Queen, it was, it was rough with the Ravens. They, they were humble about that one. They showed humility about that one. Like, hey, you know what? Maybe Patrick Queen, right, right now, he ain't it right now. All right, Josh Bynes, can you come through? Can you save us? So that was good. I appreciated that. That was good. But in order for the Ravens to fix their issues, they got to be willing to admit their issues. They are 7-3. and three. They are a beautiful 7-3. and three. That record is just wonderful. Love it. But if they keep doing the same stuff that they've been doing, 
Now, of course, they've been winning. They've been winning a lot, which is great. We love that. But again, can't stress it enough. Browns, Browns, Steelers, Steelers, Bengals, Packers, Rams. You got to step it up. Got to step it up. So this is the time where um, Harbaugh and them, um, Wink and them, Giro and them, this is a perfect time for them to hit that hit a stride. It's perfect time. You get Lamar Jackson back. Hollywood, he'll probably be back. But you 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 know your nucleus of players. And you you've been given plenty of examples of what they can, what they can't do, what they're good at, what they struggle with. You have plenty of film to go over. You have plenty of games that you've seen them perform in. So now it's time to put that all together and come up with a grand master plan. And a, a and a grand master plan that that has room to be changed. Because you can't go into every single game thinking the same way. You can't go into against every single opponent having the same view of them. You have to be willing to make changes based on your opponents. Because all your opponents are not the same. All your opponents are not carbon copies of each other. And even in see this this last half of the season your adjustments will be tested more than ever. Why? Because in this last half of the season, two times you will play the same team twice, twice. So you'll play the Steelers twice. You'll play the Browns twice. And get this. Here's the kicker. And a team that you already played earlier, you'll be playing them again. So... Ravens have been very stubborn. They, they, they go into a lot of game plans very stubborn. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it barely works. But, hey, the, the results speak for themselves, I guess. But now, your coaching will be tested more than ever. Ever. I, I, I've said this before uh, years ago. I, I hate when we look back at a game and be like man coaching lost that one i feel like there should never be a game where coaching lost it i feel like it should all be on the players i feel like it should all be on the players my opinion though that's just me i'm not i'm, I'm not a coach i'm not a professional i'm not anything i'm just i'm just on here talking having some fun but that's my opinion so i just Going into this last portion of the season, I don't want that to be it. If Ravens lose, let it be. All right, man, man, oh, Lamar's missing on throws today. Oh, man, that offensive line wasn't blocked. Oh, man, they couldn't get the running game going. Oh, receivers were dropping it. Oh, man, they just weren't tackling good enough. Oh, man, uh, that cornerback just got beat. I just don't feel like it should ever be on coaching. I feel like coaching should be putting these guys in the best position to succeed. And really just trying to get the best out of these guys, too. Now, and this ain't a video to, to rip on the coaches or anything like that. And just to give all the praise to the players. Because it is, it's bo both sides share blame, for sure. No doubt. Coaches share blame, players share blame. Both of them share blame. So they, they got to get this thing right fast. Because if you don't, things could fall apart like that. You're seven and three. You mess around, slip up against the Browns. You be seven and four. Oh, okay, no, we cool. Then you got Steelers up next. You mess around. You could be seven and five. Then you mess around. You go to Cleveland this time. You mess around. You could be seven and six. The season could change immediately, immediate, right away. This is why it's so important that you you play your best. You coach your best. You bring your best every single week. We had a question from subscriber the other, well, actually that we was doing today. It got sent to me the other day, but we just did all of our questions from subscribers today. All of them, every single last one of them. So y'all will see that very soon. But um, he talked about how you, you can't, and it was somebody that said that they've been on both sides of the ball. They said he said he's played uh, on both sides of the ball and he's also coached. So he got experience doing both, which is cool. So shout out to him. But he said you cannot coach effort. You can't. Can't coach effort. 
Somebody either got it or they don't. And I feel like that's true. You can tell somebody today, you need to give me your best. You need to give more. You can tell them that. You can try to motivate them. But effort, that, that starts with them. They have to want to be willing to do whatever it is that they are doing. And they have to be willing to show effort. So, again, it's on players to show that effort to be coached. And to really put it out there when they play. It's on coaches to show effort like, hey, I'm the coach here. But I'm also, and, and, I, and I got great experience. And I've had a lot of success in this league. But I'm also willing to, to change some stuff. So, it, again, it, it's on both sides. Both sides for sure. Uh, but anyway, Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And like Kevin Seymour isn't, but we are. <laughs> I'm out, man. We gone.